friends, and welcome to the December 6th edition of Weekly Witness, Texas Impact's weekly opportunity for mainstream Texans of faith to learn about public policy issues here in the great state of Texas and have a conversation about how you can engage in the process. My name is Scott Atnip, your host and Texas Impact's Engagement Director, and today's episode is brought to you by Methodist Healthcare Ministries of South Texas and Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas. And I can't believe that we have made it to the last live edition of Weekly Witness of 2021. We will have a special recorded edition next week, and that will probably be dropped in the podcast feed and on YouTube on Tuesday or Wednesday, so watch for that. But we won't have uh, a live episode next Monday. And friends, I just have to say, between the the 140-day regular session this year and the three 30-day special sessions, 2021 has been a wild ride for sure. And we just want to take a second to thank you for your incredible advocacy this year and for joining in the conversation each week. I hope that everyone will find some time to relax over the, the next couple of weeks during the holiday season. But relax to prepare yourself uh, for the important work that will begin at the very beginning of 2022. We'll be talking about elections and we'll come out in, in January ready to go. So gear up and be prepared for that. We'll talk more about that in upcoming opportunities next week. But uh, while we hope that the Texas legislature is done for 2021, there is still a lot going on in our nation's capital before the end of the year. And we've talked over the course of the last few weeks about uh, the Build Back Better legislation. And here with us to talk more about that and give us a federal update is friend of the program, Laura Peralta Schulte, who is Senior Director of Public Policy and Government Affairs with Network, one of our faith-based advocacy partners in DC. So Laura, thanks for joining us. Uh, I think- and that, and that, It's gonna be quiet uh, uh, for the remainder of the year. My ears picked up because as this, is, this is go time for us, but happy yes. to do it. All right. So, um, I know you've been on the program before, but it's it's been a few minutes. Um, can you remind listeners uh, who Network is and what you're about? Absolutely. So Network Lobby for Catholic Social Justice is an organization that was founded by a group of Catholic sisters 50 years ago, almost today. Um, and most of those uh, sisters were teachers or social workers or lawyers. And what came, became very clear is that um, the, the charity work that was being done or the work on the ground that was being done was excellent, but without systemic change, changes in systems that we couldn't really meet the goals of ending poverty and lifting up the dignity of all folks. So we've been a federal lobby for 50 years working on a multitude of issues, many of which are included in the Build Back Better bill. We're over 100,000 strong. We've got a team in Texas. Uh, and just so so really happy to be with you today, Scott, to talk about the Build Back Better bill. Uh, sorry, I was having trouble with my unmute button. Uh, the sad. wonders of Zoom in 2021. Uh, so first of all, uh, happy birthday um, soon to, to Network. And I hope that we'll have something that we can all celebrate uh, soon uh, in, in the form of the Build Back Better uh, legislation. So let's, let's start there, because this is certainly a historic... Uh, piece of legislation, and, and we've been following it over the course of the last few weeks. Uh, a previous speaker we had on the program uh, called it the most important piece of legislation in his career. Um, so can you, uh, you know, I, I feel like we spend a lot of time, that, or the media anyway, spends a lot of time talking about like the sausage making without really paying attention to what's actually in the bill. Uh, so can you just start and remind us of, of what's actually in the version that the House passed and why it's important? Oh my gosh, I'm very happy to. And let me start with my pet peeve issue. Uh, uh, and, and as a Texan, hopefully this will perk up your ears, healthcare, because your delegation has been working tirelessly to make sure that uh, Texans who uh, have not been able to have the, the, the privilege, I shouldn't I should say it shouldn't be a privilege, it's, healthcare should be a right, but who have been excluded from coverage uh, because of the non-expansion of Medicaid. Like this bill allows people who uh, to get Medicaid, it's a workaround from your government's failure to, to expand that program. So I, I just, this bill is the largest expansion of healthcare since the Affordable Care Act. 
There, is, there are provisions in there to deal with the pernicious issue of uh, um, the high mortality deaths of Black, Brown, and Indigenous women um, as they're giving birth. It extends the premium tax credits uh, to make health care affordable for so many Texans. Uh, this alone uh, would be a cause for a, a big shout of hallelujah, but that's not it. Um, in terms of what is also included, uh, access to child care. So for the, this is going to be the, the largest investment in child care in early education in history. So it, it is a universal high quality preschool for every three and four year old. Um, that is a tremendous uh, advantage for uh, kids in terms of getting ahead of learning and for parents, you know, who are, we know how expensive childcare is. We know how expensive quality preschools are. It's amazing. Also included in the bill, you know, efforts, real funding efforts to reduce emissions and flight climate change. You know, it does not escape us uh, in terms of your uh, your experience this year with the uh, with the electricity shortage and the and the weather changes, you know we've got to do everything we can now to remediate uh, and get ready for uh, continued climate change. So this bill uh, provides money for that. This bill also um, uh, provides a paid leave uh, for parents, and uh, so that. If you have a child, you get paid leave. If your parents uh, are elderly and you need time off from work to take them to the doctor, that is paid. You know, just things that when you look around the country at other developed uh, 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 countries, you know, things that people take for granted that our people don't have, unless you're in a job that you're lucky enough to have it. These are gonna be standard, standard practices for the country. So housing supports, uh, I mean, this bill really is transformative. And so that is why we are so excited to, to put our all behind it. Um, there's plenty of materials I can, sh I can share after that are Texas specific in terms of how many parents are gonna get permanent access to the child tax credit, you know, uh, moving forward. Um, I don't know. I feel so good about this bill. I could talk for a long time, but you probably your, your viewers probably want to know how they can engage. So I will I will hold there if there are certain questions. Uh, um, happy to talk more, but transformative. Yeah. We've got to get this done by Christmas. Uh, well, I, I love the energy and I love the information, and and it sounds like so many of the important priorities of Americans of faith are, are found in this in this bill. Uh, I wonder if you can talk for a minute just about how the faith community, how, you know, network and other faith partners in D.C. have been involved in the shaping of uh, this legislation. Yeah, I love that question. So, yes. So, you know that we have been working for years on affordable care, on food, on health, on all of these issues. And I think, Scott, what has really been the opening for this uh, and for our input has both been the administration seriously, really for the first time in a long time, asking the faith community who has relationship with folks on the ground, like, what do you need? What, what does Build Back Better look for, look like for your communities? And so they've done a very wonderful job of, of getting from us both what we're seeing and uh, suggestions for how to move forward. We've put together uh, working papers for them early as they were developing this plan. Um, a lot of it comes out of our work in the American Rescue Plan that, that was the beginning of the administration. So some of this is, is uh, extending what was in that bill uh, and some of it like the Medicaid piece that is a workaround to get to get you guys actual uh, 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 health care without having to depend on your governor. Uh, uh, you know, that was an innovation that that uh, because it was clear Texas is not going to do anything in the near term, at least um, uh, on that issue. So we've had really good uh, ability to input. These are these are our priorities that are in this bill. And that's why we're working so hard to get it through. Excellent. Well, we certainly appreciate the work you and all of uh, all the other faith uh, leaders and faith partners are, are doing in D.C. So I, I didn't want to spend too much time on, you know, kind of the, the process uh, type questions. But I do think it's important that 
we do kind of know where we are is uh, and for those who are listening later or uh, watching later, we're recording on Monday, uh, December 6th. So this is all <laughs> current as of now. Uh, so my understanding is the, the House is passed the Build Back Better Act and it's it's sitting in the Senate waiting for action. Um, I think we've we previous, previously talked about the infrastructure bill that was kind of or maybe not tied with this legislation has passed and that has a lot of good things in it as well. But uh, so we're waiting on the Senate now. Is that right? Is there any update on kind of That's where great. we are That's there? Correct. So so uh, so I'm obsessed by process because that is how you get stuff through. Uh, but let me just so for for folks that don't speak D.C. and there is actually no reason to speak D.C. unless you're there. Uh, we're in the fourth quarter. And, and we are getting to the two minute mark in the fourth quarter. I'm a football fan. So I have to, I have to use that as an analogy. Where we are at is, is, is the following. As you said, yes, the bill has made it to the Senate side. Um, and what is happening right now is that because we're using this process called budget reconciliation, which is, which is a process that allows the Democrats to get something through with 50, 50 votes, um, with uh, the vice president weighing in, the, 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 what is in the bill must match the rules of the, of the process. So there is this um, very, very wonky process going on right now with something called the Senate Parliamentarian. And, uh, and right now there are, it's like a little bit of a trial, frankly. And so what happens is the, somebody raises an issue, it's going to be the Republicans. Today, there's a parliamentarian uh, uh, discussion on health care. They are saying that in this health care issue, that, that this piece cannot go into a budget reconciliation process because it breaks the rules. So, so between the, these, the, the, this process began last week uh, on some of the immigration issues, it'll continue this week. And it is not until those parliamentarian issues are finalized that we can move it to the floor. Uh, uh, so, so that is um, where we are at right now. What we anticipate is that uh, the, the hopefully the budget parliamentarian process will conclude this week. Uh, we're looking at floor action uh, beginning next week, the week of the 13th, 14th, 15th. That's gonna be a big time. We'll, we, it's gonna be nasty. It's a whole process where you have open amendments. We know that the Republicans are gonna try to use this as a way to message against Democrats on immigration and God knows what else. So so, uh, so we're getting prepared now, but but again, the goal is to get this thing done before they break for the for the Christmas holiday. And that is the mission and that is where we're focused. So in theory, a lot of action uh, next week, kind of a week from now. And I anticipate that'd take several days, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, when do they hope to break for Christmas? So so they uh, so they are not scheduled to begin after next week. Uh, but but again, this is this is the fiction of Washington. Everybody knows they're going to be in. Everybody, uh, uh, but the press and the politicians up there understand that uh, that this is a priority issue, along with some of the last must do things for the year. So so the uh, speaker. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Leader Schumer will keep members in until this is concluded. I will say if they make any modifications to the bill in May, because we don't know what's going to happen with the parliamentarian on some of these issues, um, that it will go through the Senate and then will have to be approved again by the House. But we anticipate that House piece will be a pro forma uh, it'll be vote yes, and everybody will go home and enjoy their their break between uh, the Christmas holiday and uh, the New Year. And it it sounded like, and I've heard a couple of interviews from from folks on the House side that that many of the main issues were were pre conference, meaning that that's many of the big things had been agreed to. So if it passes the Senate, I would expect. Should, yeah. or I guess I'll phrase it as a question: Should we expect it? it sail through the house on the other side? So, oh, yeah, yeah. I would expect that, that that everybody is exhausted by this bill. We've been building back better now for so many months that, uh, Scott, I, I, I know the outside is getting to the point, like, please just get it done. And I know the inside is too. So the house will not be a a, uh, a challenge to get that forward. I think we're the, the parliamentarian issue, though, could definitely knock out or limit some of the 
the meat of the bill. Uh, the hope is that it does not, but we don't know how she's going to rule on some of those issues. But you know, we're doing the best we can to get as much as it through. Uh, there's a commitment from the White House and from the leaders on in both houses. So praise God. Come Holy Spirit. Let's get this thing done <laughs> and, and, and go home for a celebration. Yes, yes. We all want to celebrate. <laughs> This holiday season. So let's let's get this done. So one of the questions we always ask is, what what can we be doing? What can listeners be doing? Are we past the point where uh, there's really a chance for input in this process? Or what recommendations do you have for us? So so I just want to say, for all of this in DC, our power comes from you. I, I I I cannot say that enough because if members are not going to be hearing things at home, that then they lose the steam. And, and I think, Scott, I just need to be clear that this bill could be at risk. Why is that? Because this bill is actually paid for. And who's paying for it? It is corporations and wealthy people who do not want to pay their fair share of taxes. And this is the pharmaceutical industry who is now going to have to start negotiating with Medicare uh, for prices to drive down prices for consumers. We are up against some of the most powerful forces in America. And you better believe the business roundtable and everybody else are trying to slow this process down, make it as difficult as possible. So folks, so folks will be like, eh, let's kick it off until next year. That is a real, real, uh, real risk. So what can you do? Call your member of Congress and say, pass. Build back better now. Call your Senate and say, pass this bill. It is really incumbent for members to, to, to be hearing from constituents now that this is a priority uh, and, and to, to communicate. And I'll just add, I, I think it's important that you know we continue to make telephone calls to Senators uh, Cornyn and Cruz, or if you're listening from another state, your senators. Uh, but many of you had Zoom meetings or made telephone calls to your uh, your representatives in the House. Um, and if they voted for it, uh, which many of them post meetings did, uh, make sure to call back and say thank you. Uh, you know, it's it's great to have those meetings, but make sure you're calling to thank them for that vote because, you know, some of them, you know, some of them are on the fence uh, prior to the vote. So it's important to have those conversations as well. That, I love that because look, you got to be real. You know, some of those members, especially in the great state of Texas, they are there is there are two three point districts, mm-hmm. and and the money that has gone into campaigns from the other side. Uh, because people are going to be asked, really, some of these some of these companies who have never paid taxes, you know what I mean, are actually going to have to pay taxes. So they have invested in trying to make it life miserable for those members. But thank you uh, uh, is is a very strategic uh, ask. Also, I just want to note that uh, uh, Laura just called Texas the great state of Texas. So let's make sure we clip that and can use it in the future. Uh, anyway, I still um, love Texas, my friend. <laughs> Um, so, so anything else on, on build back better that we should be thinking about or paying attention to and moving forward. So I don't know who, uh, who, if you all are tweeters or, uh, in your network, um, we are playing the faith community is looking at trying to put together a press conference next week in Washington. Um, Scott, I can follow up with some information. Uh, yeah, we're uh, coordinating with, uh, with, uh, leader Schumer's office and others, we want to make it as uncomfortable as possible for people to go home without doing their job. Uh, just like the child tax credit run out at the end of December, there are all kinds of programs that that uh, that we love, that people count on, that uh, that will lapse in the access, in the uh, if we're not moving. So, to the degree that folks want to be engaged in Twitter storms that we're doing next week, uh, uh, you know. Uh, cheer us on as we're holding press conferences, holding our members accountable. Love the help. I definitely send that information. Uh, B's been talking all year about the importance of uh, listeners being on Twitter and engaging with uh, their elected representatives there. So I'm sure we would have some folks who'd be interested in that. Um, So uh, we, so we're going to spend the next few weeks uh, paying attention to and making telephone calls on build back better. And then 
we're going to hopefully take a little break after it passes and relax down this holiday season and celebrate. But uh, what else uh, is network work working on? What should we be paying attention to uh, post Build Back Better going into 2022? So I would just, for, for our organization, and I think the faith community, there are a couple of things that we're really focused on. Um, and, and really, Texas, again, is the heart of the work. Um, and I just want to raise our, demo- our efforts on democracy and voting rights. I mean, you, are, you all are ground zero for uh, uh, something that has been uh, happening around the country in, uh, in states that are led by Republican members, unfortunately, and that is the restriction of democratic systems. That is incredibly serious. So there are some very, very quiet conversations going on in Washington. Our hope is that there could be a way forward uh, that is uh, this year or very early next to remove the filibuster as the impediment for progress so that we can we can maintain and expand our democracy. I, 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 Scott, I'd love to get your sense of what's happening in the state of Texas on the voting rights uh, piece. I just, I, that, it, it is amazing that we are gonna be uh, investing in our communities in both the bipartisan infrastructure bill and in Build Back Better. But I am extremely worried about the state of our democracy. And I'm not sure if that's a conversation you've had on this call, but uh, uh, I'd love to hear. Only, only a few dozen times, uh, Laura. Yeah, it's, uh, it was the issue I think our members probably spent the most time and energy in during the course of the legislative session. And uh, we've held a series of events. And spoiler to those who are listening, next week we'll, we'll have an announcement for you all about um, continuing the conversation about how congregations can involve and in, in making sure we're protecting our election infrastructure. And so uh, it, it was certainly a disappointing year from a legislative standpoint. We are definitely hoping that uh, our, our friends in DC can address this at the federal level. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're going to have, we're going to have elections in March, um, here in Texas, and, uh, we're going to need congregations and people of faith, um, uh, engaged in that process, uh, to support the election infrastructure, uh, that we do have, because, um, there are changes being made. Some people might be scared off and we need to make sure that we have enough polling locations and, and volunteers to make those elections happen. So it's certainly something we're engaged in and, uh, and we'll continue to, uh, follow y'all's lead and and and, um, and d- distribute any information uh, or action alerts y'all have at the federal level about how Texans can can get involved because uh, we certainly need it here in the great state of Texas. You know, and it is all around the country. It is all around the country. So, so if, if folks, I, I'm at I'm at the point on that issue that it is prayer that may be some of the most helpful. Uh, uh, create, create some helpful possibilities because, you know, there, again, I would just say there are, you're not reading the press, but there are members who are trying to work forward a way to get this bill, these bills on the floor, both the, for the People Act and the, uh, and the uh, Voting Rights uh, Advancement Act. We need it. <laughs> Come Holy Spirit again. Let, let, right. uh, uh, and, and really helpful. Uh, uh, for folks just to, to lift up, you know, in the spirit and 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 work at the same time. So that action is like going on, and that would be appreciated. Yeah. So I assume I assume telephone calls to the house on that side is is worthwhile as well. Like we haven't forgot. Like y- y'all have to y'all have to get this done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I say, Scott, just the amendment I would make there is this is a Senate problem, as so many of our problems are, because you have that that what we would call a very racist filibuster uh, provision that blocks action. So if folks uh, can uh, uh, continue to uh, uh, even if they're not going to do the right thing, you know, make sure that uh, your members know that it's a priority for you as Texans. That 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 is really quite faithful. Um, well, I'm glad we are on the same page there. Josh uh, will definitely be happy that uh, voting rights came up uh, as part of the priorities for next year. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so Laura, any any closing thoughts or shameless plugs you want to leave with us today? No, just, uh, you know, we will get you, uh, there are some nice Texas-based materials that the White House has put out 
that tells you exactly how many people will benefit from health care, how many people will get child care, uh, you know, who is getting the child tax credit, including people that are filing with uh, ITINs or alternatives to social security numbers. Um, we can get you material. would love to, to see your folks on Twitter next week uh, and keep those phone calls coming. We will have a full agenda next year, including things like reparations, including sentencing reform, uh, the Equal Act, and who knows what's gonna happen on marijuana. And uh, so, you, you know, the, the world is full of surprises. Uh, our, our, our table will be active next year and, and somebody from our table would love to come back and, and brief you on, on next year if, if there's opportunity. Perfect. And I, I was excited to see that Christian is with, with you all now. Uh, oh my for, gosh. Yeah. What a, he's a blessing. And, uh, and I know for, he, he's going to be leading up our justice systems reform work. Okay. And there's a lot of work to do there. So well, uh, fellow, fellow Texan in DC, we've had Amen. him on several Amen. times. So we'll look forward to uh, reconnecting with both you and Christian and the rest of the network team. But uh, Laura, uh, thank you so much for the incredible work uh, that you're doing on behalf of um, people of faith, but uh, we'll say for today, Texans of faith, uh, and really appreciate the energy you bring to it. And I really hope uh, that we can trade some emails later this year and celebrate together. Um, we are going to, we are, we are going to, we are going to put it out into the atmosphere. We are going to celebrate. We are building back better. Texans are going to have health care and, and bless you for this, this program and for activating your network. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you once again. And friends, hey, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, this has been a really important conversation, and my hope is that you'll get your friends and neighbors and congregations uh, to join you in this activism uh, over the course of the next two weeks or so uh, to try to push Build Back Better over the finish line. Uh, we certainly have work to do. Uh, if you've stayed with us this long, uh, please make sure that you leave this, uh, this program a rating or review so even more friends can find it and join us in this important work. Uh, leave the highest rating, leave a comment. Maybe we'll read that on air in future weeks. Uh, remember to keep an eye on Texas Impact social media and website for upcoming announcements, uh, or you can always email me at scott at texasimpact.org with any questions. And remember, if you appreciate Texas Impact and the Weekly Witness community, please make sure that you and your congregation are members by going to texasimpact.org slash join. Uh, friends, uh, the Texas legislature may be winding down for the year, but there is still a lot of important work going on, and we need Texans of faith active and engaged. So let's get to work.